Rather than give you all of the theory to begin with, this is one of those concepts where it's best understood just by, let's have a look at an example and let's see what happens, okay? So here is a function that I want us to investigate. Uh, it's a fairly simple function. It's a function which we can know a lot about without knowing any calculus, okay? It's a cubic. It's a cubic. So we can start to draw this thing based on if we can factorize it. That's how we usually approach polynomials. So it's a very easy cubic. What can I do to start factorizing this question? I can take a factor of x out, and that leaves me with x squared, take away 6x plus 9. That's nice, because what's left in there is a perfect square. Right? It's a quadratic, and it's not just any quadratic. It's a perfect square. So what I've got now is x outside of X, 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 X take away 3, all squared. Okay, great. So now that I know that, I already have a great idea of what this looks like, okay? Um, I know that uh, cubic, I'm expecting three roots. I've got one here, but then I have two roots on the same spot at three, okay? Now what, is, what does that look like? Well, don't, don't draw this just yet. Don't draw this just yet. Um, normally at this point, all you would be able to do is to say, okay, I've got a root at zero, and I've got a root at one, two, three, okay, and it's a, it's, there are two roots there. Uh, being that this is a cubic with, what's the leading coefficient? It's one. So it's, it's monic, it's positive is the important thing that I'm looking at. So therefore, for very large values of x, what happens to y? Also very large, right? Also very large, and importantly, very large positive, okay? Because you guys know a cubic can sort of start at the bottom and go to the top, or it can do the reverse. It can start at the top and go to the bottom. We're looking at category one here, right? So roughly speaking, this is the shape I'm expecting, okay? Roughly speaking. And that's all you'd be expected to do at the moment, okay? Um, however, now we know all this derivative stuff, right? And so we can know a lot more about the geometry of this thing, in particular, where on earth is that, right? What's that called again? What's that spot called? A stationary point. I can find where that is very easily by going to the next derivative. So let's just quickly do that. If this is y, let's compute the first derivative. Excellent. Thank you. Um, being that I've factorized it, the reason why I factorized was so that I could get a picture of it, okay? But to differentiate, probably easiest to go back to the original one, right? Like I don't need chain of product or anything like that. So differentiate for me. 3 Good. Okay, again, something which is relatively easy to factorize, so I'm going to take out a factor of 3. three. Leaving me with this guy. And what can we do with this? What can we do with this? Factor is negative three. Okay, fantastic. So this is negative 1, negative 3. Well, I really, well, it doesn't matter which order I do. Okay. Okay, now just pause for a second, right? Remember that we were drawing some conclusions about some conclusions about where the roots were based on where the zeros of this are. Okay? By the way, if you remember, that's some notation, some, some language that I've talked about before. Zeros are values that make this thing zero. Okay? So this thing, I can't say, I'm not looking, looking for the solutions of this. The solutions of this are every single point on the line. Okay? But the zeros are where it collides with the x-axis. Okay? So the zeros here were at zero and three. So that was where my intercepts are. Okay. This has different zeros. Well, one of them is the same. What are the zeros of this guy? One and three. One and three. Okay. Now these don't correspond to intercepts, but to stationary points, right? This is where this, the first derivative is zero. Okay. So these are my stationary points. Okay, now you can start to see. Let's notice a couple of things, right? Again, this is my rough drawing. We're going to draw a proper one actually very, very shortly. But you can see, like, I just roughly did that, right? I roughly did it. And you'll notice where I put my stationary point just when I did my, you know, freehand curve is I put that roughly halfway between. Okay, and that's not a bad guess to make. And if you did that in, like, end of year 10, start of year 11, that would be fine. But now we know that's not where it is at all. It is not halfway at all. Okay, this is a cubic, you don't get the same kind of symmetry you get with a parabola, where the, um, the stationary point is right in the middle of the thing. It's actually going to be over here at 1. Okay? I think we have enough information to graph this thing properly now. Okay, so here's what I'm going to ask you to do. On your page, um, we're going to use the whole page. We've got our first derivative. We've also, sorry, we've got our function, we've got our first derivative. 
In a minute, because that's what we're focusing on, we're going to get the second derivative as well. And I want us to compare all of them geometrically. So would you draw with me three sets of axes, all one on top of each other? That's actually really important that they're all one on top of each other. <laughs> Thank you, it's okay. I think I'm just a bit cold. Okay, now this time like we're not focusing on the formality of stuff, so normally I would set this out a bit neater, but we're just trying to get a picture in a, in a sort of quick and dirty fashion, okay? So in some ways, by the way, what we're doing right now is if the question were simply sketch, and they said showing all features, and there were like you know three or four marks on this thing, okay? The, the emphasis is not on this working, but on what my final result will be. But obviously I've got to put some working down. Okay? But I'm not, you know how we've um, been writing a lot of stuff when we're going through a question to find the stationary points, determine their nature and so on. That is not the focus of this question. The focus of this question is the picture. Okay? So that's what I'm doing at the moment. Now I already know, uh, and this time I'm going to do it properly, I'm going to measure it out. I've got one, two, three. So there are my two intercepts. Now I found the x values for the stationary points, right? Uh, rather uncoincidentally, I've noticed that one of the stationary points is also one of the roots, okay? So I don't need to find the coordinates of that. I already know where it is. But I don't know up and down. I don't know where this stationary point, the x equals 1 stationary point, I don't know where it is. So how do I find its location? Sub it into y is equal to Fantastic. X. Very good. Um, just another reason why it's important, why you write y <laughs> equals this and dy and dx equals that, so you don't confuse, where am I putting this thing again? I'm looking for a y coordinate. So that's why I'm going to put it in here. So let's write this. When x equals 1, y equals, I'm going to do my straight substitution. 1, take away 6 plus 9, which is? 4. Okay, so now I have a y coordinate. So that tells me that this stationary point here is actually 1, 4. And this one is 3, 0. Okay, that's enough for me. That's enough for us to draw this. Let's plot this. And this time, being that I am. Um, I don't actually need to worry too much about the up-down of this because you'll notice my y-intercept, my actual y-intercept, is zero. Okay. Now, had I noticed, for example, up here, there was like a plus one here, so it would be the same thing, just moved up one. Okay. If I made this x-intercept one, I'd really have to be careful and pay attention if this next intercept would be at a particular point. That scale's got to be consistent vertically, but I don't have any other points to be consistent with vertically here anyway, so I'm just going to put it wherever I want. Okay. Uh, that's going to be a stationary point, right? So just as a little aid for myself, I'm going to put a horizontal line there because that's what it should do when it gets there. That's a guide for me to make sure as I draw it up, it's going to behave in the way that I want. And I already knew I've got a stationary point there. Okay. And from here, it's join the dots. So I'm going to do this. Okay, I did all right. 